here we go, William Lloyd Garrison. When William Lloyd Garrison started his newspaper, The Liberator, in Boston, when he was advocating for the immediate abolition of slavery and full citizenship for the former slaves, he was read out of town on a rail in the North, not in the South. Oh, that's why I put Garrison in there, Michael. I knew you'd love him. He's totally uncompromising. Oh, absolutely. He argued for a long time that the North had an obligation to secede from any kind of organization with the slaveholding South. He argued, in his words, that gradualism in theory is perpetuity in practice. And any compromise on issues of liberty means, in real life, those issues will never be resolved. This is why he had such a mixed view on the Civil War. Because on the one hand, he understood this is about the federal government and not about slavery. On the other hand, he saw this was a potential for means he did not like for slavery to be ended. In that seventh grade history textbook that we were all assigned, the abolitionists are treated cartoonishly. We read that in the South, they wanted slavery, and in the North, they wanted full civil rights for black Americans. Well, when William Lloyd Garrison came along and advocated that very thing, he was nearly killed for that in Boston. And what's more, we're told that, of course, the North opposed secession and the South favored it. But William Lloyd Garrison thought what was needed was a dissolution of the Union. His newspaper, which was the Liberator, on the very masthead for 20 years said, no Union with slaveholders. It was front and center. And it was a perspective that was very prominent among many abolitionists. What made William Lloyd Garrison a real American hero is that he was a journalist who did speak truth to power and put himself in harm's way as a consequence of being open and explicit about his radical views. Views that nowadays are pretty much taken as commonplace. There was no pretense of showing both sides when it came to an issue of what he regarded as absolute moral evil. There's right and there's wrong, and he damn well intend to stand on the side of right. Well, as a matter of fact, the American Anti-Slavery Society, which Garrison co-founded, was committed to the idea of dissolving the Union. In fact, in Massachusetts, the Massachusetts Anti-Slavery Society said publicly, we now publicly abjure our allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Union and place the broad seal of our reprobation on this unnatural and unholy alliance between liberty and slavery. The Union, in our judgment, is not only at war with the law and government of God and destructive of the peace, the honor, and prosperity of the North, but of no real benefit to the South since it serves to delay the day of her visitation only to plunge her the deeper into infamy and ruin. We therefore declare its obligations, so far as they relate to ourselves, utterly null and void, and we now publicly pledge ourselves to seek, in all suitable ways, its peaceful dissolution. They continue, We shall accept of no office under the Constitution of the United States as long as slavery remains an element of the government, nor shall we aid in electing others to fill such offices. Yeah, when people find out that the big abolitionists of the day were the first and foremost ones arguing for secession, attacking the Constitution, and trying to destroy the Union, their minds are blown. Real American history is rarely simple American history. If you're going to look at it as secession is the bad guys and Union are the good guys, you're calling the abolitionists villains. And you're having a very, very two-dimensional version of American history.